You are listening to Blue Please here on Wow Radio with myself, Total Biscuit. Oh, it wouldn't be a show without Blizzard doing something stupid. I imagine some of you tire of this. If you do, there are plenty of other amazing podcasts on our network that you could listen to that don't involve me. In fact, there's maybe one that involves me that you might actually like because it's not very negative. It's called Gaming the System. It's not very hard to find a bunch of positive things to talk about in the world of gaming. It's a little bit harder to find positive things to talk about in the world of Warcraft. Admittedly, there was a much more positive show coming on uh, tonight. Oh, yes. It's Wild Things Considered at midnight BST. That is 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, only on WCRadio.com. The fine Cadwallian and Dunkor there. be providing you with a counterpoint to my rage. Always nice to have that. Great to have all those differing opinions on this particular network. It's one of our primary strengths. Right. Bornak, you silly, silly man, came up with a cracking quote that I absolutely despise. I will provide you with this quote. At least I would like to in the IRC channel. I can't. Because at the moment, for some reason, I can't get an IRC. However, I shall use the power of Tiny Earl. Ooh. Tiny Earl. I shall create this Earl for you. This will take you to the post I'm talking about. TinyEarl.com slash BoreLol. That's B-O-R-L-O-L. B-O-R-L-O-L. That's TinyEarl.com URL. Slash B-O-R-L-O-L. BoreLol. Quite. This will take you. This will show you. Right. Quote, the current plan is to make Emblems of Triumph the base of Emblems, so everything that drops Emblems of Conquest would be changed to Triumph, and then the new raid content would drop the new highest Emblem, along with things like the Heroic Daily and such. Things can still change. There's the reminder from him. God, I hope they do. Right. I've done the whole badge rage thing. You don't want to hear it again. It'll be exactly the same. Exactly the same as last time if I do it. That's dull for people. I don't want to repeat myself. However, I do have an alternative idea that I would like to share with you. A possibility, if you will, that Blizzard may not have thought of. And this comes from racing games. Something that I imagine Blizzard are only mildly familiar with, considering they released one called Rock and Roll Racing, which I might add requires a sequel. Do it, and all sins will be forgiven. So here's the idea. Rubber banding. That's the term I'm going to be using. This is what rubber banding is. Rubber banding is a way for the AI, or indeed in some cases the player, to cheat in order to catch up. You see this most often as the AI. It's quite rare that it's implemented as a player mechanic, but it can happen. Now, in terms of the AI, say you're driving in a racing game and you're streets ahead. And then suddenly, you see in your rearview mirror, having driven an absolute perfect lap at breakneck speeds, that somehow the AI has managed to catch up to you. Now, of course, you know that this is impossible. You know, when you overtook them and then sped off into the distance, you were a mile ahead of them and had not made a single mistake. Massive top speed all the way. Perfect drifts. Perfect cornering. Basically, you are the god of cars, let's be honest. And suddenly, out of the corner of your eye, you see the AI. Like, hmm, he appears to be driving a car that's exactly the same as mine, yet it is going considerably faster. He hasn't picked up a speed power-up or anything like that. Indeed, this is Gran Turismo. I'm pretty sure that there are no speed power-ups. Now, I'm not saying that Gran Turismo has rubber banding. I believe it's one of those realistic games that does not. However, there are certain games that do. And the AI has caught up to you. And you think, well, that's a bit cheap, isn't it? Now, sometimes, in certain games, this can also happen with players. Players that get so far behind, they get literally put back. It's like, here you go. You made loads of mistakes, but it's okay, because we're going to push you forward. Give you another shot. You failed again. And another shot. You failed again. And another shot. And another shot. And another. And another. And oh, God. You get the idea. Now, this particular term in gaming applies rather well to what Blizzard are currently doing in terms of the badge system, which, of course, I may remind you, will continue to remind you until this show goes off the air, whenever that may be, that 
Blizzard specifically said they did not want to repeat the same mistakes. And they did it anyway. I suppose I can see where they're coming from to some degree. They're trying to hybridize the system. Like, well, we can use the system to help people aren't very good, and we can also make it so that it's good to fill in the gaps for the hardcore players. Yeah, unfortunately, that happened anyway. That happened back in Burning Crusade. That was considered the great mistake in terms of the badge system. So let's not claim that this new hybrid system, you know, new system, same as the old system, is any good whatsoever. It isn't. Now... What you're doing is you're bringing everyone up to a certain level of guaranteed gear every time you release a tier. That's dumb <laughs> to start with. The whole point of there being a progression path is that you actually follow the progression path and get better as you go. And you are rewarded appropriately for the level of content that you are doing. This will make you a better player. This also is more enjoyable. Any of you that have played a computer-based role-playing game, particularly, if, let's make an example, Diablo 2, let's, let's make it very close to home, shall we? Let's remind Blizzard of what they used to be doing. Diablo 2, the progression from lowest level to max level, and all of the gear that you got, the incremental upgrades as you went, that was very enjoyable. Indeed, as a hack and slash RPG, the loot, and of course the slaughter, pretty damn important elements of the game, one might say. So, I would suggest that the loot and the slaughter are also important elements of World of Warcraft, and thereby, skipping several tiers of that is actually jipping the players. Now you might say, but, Total Biscuit, of course these players could just go and do this content and get the 7.5, then the 8.5. Right, there are two groups of players in WoW. There are people who are in guilds and there are people who are not. Yeah. And you can subdivide those down to people who raid with guilds and people who do not. Now, the gear, if you pug, can be acquired in a vast number of different ways. Now, say when, when this comes in, you're going to be able to get tier 9 level loot, right? Yep, we're aware of this. Tier 9 level loot from running Nax and Heroics. Which is mind-bogglingly freaking stupid to begin with. And anyone with any sense should realize this. But the worst thing about it specifically, is that that progression in terms of loot, seeing those incremental upgrades, 7.5, then 8.5, then 9.5 or whatever it is, seeing those upgrades, they're not going to get to experience that. They're not going to see any need for it. Stuff's going to get replaced faster than you know what. They're going to not enjoy getting that loot. I remember enjoying getting loot from Naxxramas. It was a long time ago, before I got bored stiff with the damn place. But I remember that. I remember enjoying that. I remember getting my 7.5. Stuff like that. So, when half of the loot, possibly even more so, is outdated and useless inside the instance, and the only reason you're going there is for badges, it's going to be a lot more boring. Getting badges is nowhere near as interesting as getting a good drop. Nowhere near. It's like getting a coupon. What would you prefer, honestly, when you open your presents at Christmas? Do you prefer getting a cool gift that you wanted, or do you, do you prefer getting a coupon that could be spent on that? Do you prefer getting a gift voucher? I'm sure some people actually do like gift vouchers, but as a, a staunch traditionalist in the area of gift giving at Christmas, I am a firm believer in getting actual physical objects under that damn tree. So... If I were just to get a bunch of gift vouchers, I would be disappointed. Yes, I'm sure it gives me choice. But it's only really the illusion of choice. I've got to buy the same kind of things with it anyway, aren't I? You know, oh, there's a couple of pieces of gear I could get. Oh, look, all of this choice. Well, there's not really. There's like a couple of pieces. I've really got to get this stuff anyway. It's not really a choice. I just sort of choose the order that I get it in. That's not exciting. Getting a cool sword drop is exciting. Always has been. Was in Diablo is here, is in any other game, in terms of MMOs. Getting a good drop in any RPG is a good thing. It's exciting and thrilling. So when you skip out a couple of those tiers, then that kind of sucks. Now, you can argue that you are encouraging players to see the content by giving them a reason to go back to old instances. Right. Pro tip, Liz. Look at your own instances. Go and look at Nax for me. 
Go on, go and have a look. Tell me how long it takes for a group to get through Nax 25. Now tell me how long it takes for that same group, or maybe even, of course, the top five players from that group, to do enough heroics to get the same number of badges. I can tell you, it takes longer to run Nax than it takes to get those badges. And Nax is infinitesimally more dull. These days it really is. So, where do you think they're going to go? <laughs> Let's be honest. Where, where exactly do you think they're going to go to get that gear? And if you think that all of these puggies are suddenly going to go back to, and enjoy the content, you're sadly mistaken. They're not going to go and see Sarth with Drakes. They're not going to go see Malagos. They're going to go anywhere other than VOA to get their free gear. The problem is, when you allow players to acquire gear in the shortest possible way, they will do it. There are some people who will do go to any lengths in terms of doing boring crap in order to get something that looks nice. My good lord, just look at the blinking mammoth users and just all of the, the rare stuff, the rare mounts and the rare non-combat pets. These have no practical purpose. People spend ages laborious, dull, repetitive tasks in order to get them. They're not enjoying the content, they just want the end result. And that's what you encourage in terms of raiding gear when you give it to them. Why do you think they took the path of least resistance when getting arena gear was the easiest way to get good gear? They didn't necessarily enjoy doing it, but they did it anyway because they want the shinies. It's funny how, yeah, real casual players, uh, real casual players can go and say, well, I don't really care about the loot and I will actually believe them. Huh? I will believe them because they're generally being honest about it. When I see entitled casual players say that, I laugh because these are the same guys complaining they can't get tier 9. They're not interested in a challenge. If they were interested in a challenge, they wouldn't need the crutch to begin with. They'd have got the guild together. They'd have got the group together. They wouldn't have even had to have a guild. They'd have just got a group of friends to go and run the 10 mans, do the hard modes, do all that stuff. What really concerns me is the fact that they've got this amazing instance in the form of Ulduar, and I think that's going to be abandoned. No one's going to go into Ulduar for badges. Not at all. And of course, those who were doing Ulduar before probably just moved on. You're looking at the minority now of the player base who are actually willing to follow the progression path, because Blizzard have gone out of their way to tell people that the progression path is wrong. Your traditional progression path from tier 7 to 8 to 9 to 10 that you've seen through all of the expansions and vanilla, of course, from easy to hard, easy to hard, easy to hard to hard at the hardest. That progression path, that's out of the window. Blizzard does not care. The only progression path that matters is the latest and greatest and that everyone gets to see it. That's nonsense, folks. That is nonsense. Why would you abandon all of this stuff? I mean, we know that Blizzard abandons raid content, and I can understand that to some degree. Sometimes raid content gets obsolete. Big deal. This is not the case within a single expansion. Okay, we know people don't want to go to Nax, but what about Ulduar? Ulduar's a great instance. Shame you didn't manage to follow that one up with something good in the terms of your awful Colosseum thing. Hopefully Ice Crown will be better. Maybe it's just the even-numbered instances that are coming out that don't suck these days. Maybe that's the design philosophy. Comes in twos, folks. Odd even, odd even. Bad good, bad good. Certainly hope not. But then again, I certainly in some respects hope so, because I want Ice Crown not to suck. So, this whole rubber banding, resetting everyone to a certain level of gear every time. You you are literally cheating players out of the really great experience that raiding can provide. That you are provided in spades beforehand. You got all this great stuff, like the 10 to 25 mans, the optional hard modes. All of this great stuff, so why ruin it by resetting everyone's gear and telling them that their progression path is nonsense? Why do that? Why rubber band them back into that position? They won't gain any satisfaction from that, and they certainly won't learn anything. My name is Total Biscuit, you're listening to Blue Please here on Wow Radio. Do I have an update news for you? Of course, ladies and gentlemen, of course, I provide. I'll be back after this and a music break to tell you a little bit about my hopes for my 10-man guild. Enjoy. Live from the Blue Please Tower, high up in the Storm Peaks, it's an Upcake News with award-winning anchor Total Biscuit, bringing you the news that matters, regardless of your own misguided beliefs. 
Welcome to this week's edition of Nubcake News. Coming up later in the program, Blizzard's new MMO to contain wings and stuff. Except for Death Knights, who get jetpacks with automated laser turrets on them. Blizzard said to believe this will balance the Death Knight, but first... As the global Azerothian recession continues, it has been announced that the Blizzard Financial Authority is instituting quantitative easing to help the world's economy recover. For those unaware of what words longer than two syllables actually mean, quantitative easing involves the deliberate introduction of new currency into the market in order to combat plummeting interest rates and prevent disastrous deflation. It has been confirmed that this, in fact, is the reason that everybody is getting tons of free Triumph and Frost emblems. In related news, a protest by the Azerothian League of University Accredited and Qualified Bosses Union, or Alu Akbar for short, has turned the city of Dalaran into a laggy, unusable waste of space. Uh, Hang on, I'm just being informed that Dalaran was like that anyway, and the protest has in fact merely turned it into a slightly more laggy, unusable waste of space. We'll be able to communicate precisely how laggy and unusable in the form of interactive pie charts and a holographic reporter later in the program. Alo Akbar has made claims that the recent economic crisis and changing employment dynamics of Azeroth are putting them out of a job. We attempted to speak to Mr. Yogsaron Esquire, but his housekeeper Sara informed us he was dozing. Instead, we contacted his ex-associate, Kathun, who we found at the benefits office, drawing his weekly pension. <coughs> you young whippersnappers have no idea how good you have it! my day, adventurers had to face up to real bosses. I remember those times. Good old Nefarian down the street used to incinerate entire raids, and not those piddly ten-man things you call raids now. Oh no, a full forty well-geared players deep-fried in a nanosecond. And don't get me started on the price of mana strudel these days. Thankfully, we were able to find someone a little more cogent to speak to, a tall fellow by the name of the Prophet Scarum, who claims he saw it all coming. It was only a matter of time, really. With the anti-intellectual crusade in full swing and the rise of those titan-worshipping creationists, the properly educated and qualified bosses have been pushed to the sidelines. It's a vast right-wing conspiracy designed to appeal to the fearful masses. Feeling decidedly unenlightened at this point, we attempted to speak to Magmadar, canine draconic overlord of the lower caves of Molten Core, who issued the following statement. Woof. It was obvious that someone was impeding our investigation from behind the scenes, but after some intense research, we were able to get in touch with Instructor Vesuvius, former dean at Naxxramas University, now working at a decidedly less prestigious Nax 25 Community College. We sat down with him for a chat over tea and biscuits. Vesuvius, thank you for talking to us today. Firstly, can you confirm or deny the rumor that in your younger days you were referred to as Razmataz? I'm not saying that you were. In fact, I believe that you weren't. But I'm just saying, why not deny the allegations? Can we get on to the real questions before I have your head, you impudent whelp? My apologies. So, can you tell us about the circumstances that led up to your dismissal from Naxxramas University? Okay, first of all, I wasn't dismissed, okay? They shut the damn place down. Sorry, who shut it down? Blizzard, of course. They claimed it was too expensive to run, and that only the top 5% were able to get in. They shut us down, and I had to move to this blasted community college. Worse still, I had tenure at that place. Tenure?! I could do whatever I wanted. I trained the best you can imagine. And now look at me, reduced to a farmable raid boss, a mere shadow of my former self, tied down by health and safety regulations and equal opportunities legislation. It's a farce, I tell you, a farce. So what was your role in Naxxramas U? I was instructor, of course. I trained them all, the very best. The Twin Emperors learned all their tricks from me. Taught them everything I know. Graduated magna cum laude, in fact. Both of them. Prince Kaelthus, now he was a wild one, but we trained him well. That guy simply won't die. I have it on good authority he's hanging out in the maelstrom at this very moment, scheming and plotting. Merely a setback, you see. Ah, yes. Merely 
a setback. Any boss you've ever encountered that's presented you with a challenge before the Bitch King came along and started getting all uppity? Yep, that was my handiwork. This was an academy for the elite. We trained the finest bosses so they could go out into the world or more accurately hang around in a dungeon and wreak havoc on players' social lives and repair bills. That is exactly what they did and those were the good days before Big Brother Blizzard decided to get all nanny developer on us. So what has caused such a massive drop in boss quality of late and why are all these qualified and experienced bosses out of a job? Well, the recession hasn't helped matters. Blizzard simply can't afford to hire real bosses anymore. A boss with that much experience and earth-shattering power can demand a good solid wage. Benefits package, including dental, and that's not to mention the performance bonuses. I heard old Cthun was pulling in six figures. Boy, if he wiped the entire raid with a double green beam. Now it's all regulations and fairness, affirmative action for casuals. They hired all these work experience bosses. In my day, you'd never get away with that kind of recruitment. Look at that new place they just knocked together, the Crusaders Coliseum. Things built out of plywood for one thing, and who did they get as a gatekeeper? That's right, Jaw Mango Worms. Two bloody Jaw Mango Worms. They can't even speak English, let alone hold a pen. How did they even sign the contracts? My guess is they're being paid under the table, brown paper bags and all. They're incompetent, too. Keep getting steamrolled every week by any bloody person. So what bloody use are they? None. That's what. If they keep going down this road, raiders are just going to have to step into an instance and loot a giant chest, and we'll all be out of a job. So, yet another irresponsible protest from the left-wing elite. This reporter is off to polish his free tier 10 and stock up on tinned foodstuffs. This has been Upkick News. Good night.